Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to insert a oropharyngeal or a Gadel airway into an unconscious patient and how to suction using a Yanka sucker and a Y suctioning catheter of an unconscious patient. So the first things to do when um, a patient comes into the emergency that is unconscious is to assess them using the look, listen and feel technique. So first of all, you'll approach your patient, wash your hands always before you approach your patient, um, approach your patient and call out their name, Anna, Anna, no response. Also, you're looking around the mouth area for any blue tinges, um, which will indicate um, lack of oxygen and you're looking for any um, accessory muscle use and ex retraction. Next, um, you're listening. So you're listening for any wheezing, crackling, a stride or any coughing noises coming from the chest area and the mouth area. And the last thing is the feel. So we're going to um, just gently palpate the trachea to see whether it's um, central or whether it's actually deviated to one side. Once you've done your assessment, then you would actually um, apply an oxygen mask while you get your Gadel ready. We actually don't have one to demonstrate that, um, but in, we would actually put one on. I'm now going to demonstrate how to insert a Gadel airway into your unconscious patient. So make sure you put on some gloves. You would take off their oxygen mask that you've put on previously. Um, if there is any um, secretions or anything in the mouth like vomit or blood, um, turn your patient onto their side. We would actually do it towards you but the camera's on that side. And with two fingers scrape out anything that's visible that you can. Next position them back onto their back and using a head tilt tilt the patient's head backwards and then open up the mouth. Um, at this stage you would then um, suction the mouth using a yanker sucker to remove any further um, debris from the mouth but I will demonstrate that a little bit later. So once you've um, suctioned all the debris out of the mouth using the yanker sucker you would then you then need to measure for the size of Gadel airway that you would use. They come in varying different sizes, so the largest being around 10 centimetres and the smallest being around 5 centimetres. And obviously if you have baby, um, they will be very small. I'm going to demonstrate to you the rotation method of insertion for a Gadel airway and this is used for anyone above 8 years of age. If you were to have a child below 8 years of age, you would actually insert it differently and I'll, I'll just briefly just demonstrate that um, after the rotation method. So to, it's really important to get the correct size. Um, of your Gadel airway, otherwise you can cause damage to your patient or it's not effective in actually holding the tongue away from blocking the airway. When you're unconscious, your jaw muscles um, are relaxed, which let the tongue drop back into your airway, stopping you from breathing, which is why you insert a Gadel airway, because it holds the tongue away from the pharynx. So to measure the correct size of a Gadel airway, you hold it by the, this is called the flange, the top flat bit here, and it's curved like this. So you want to measure from the lips of the patient down to the back of the jaw here. So this one's actually about the correct size. We'll just check a different sized one. That one's probably a little bit small. So I think we'll go with this one. To insert it, make sure you're holding the mouth open. You're actually holding it by the flange at the top of the gadel. You're going to insert it this way. So you're pushing it over the top of the tongue, making sure not to actually push the tongue down into the airway. You want to flatten the tongue down to move it away from the airway. So you push it down into the mouth, gently down to about a third to a half 
length of the actual gadel once it's to the soft part of the palette and then turning it 180 degrees you're going to turn it around as you're gently further pushing it down into the mouth and it should rest on the top of the lips like so um, you just need to make sure that you actually haven't pushed the tongue down to actually block the airway and that the, the lower lip is not being pinched between the teeth and the flange of the Goodell airway. If once the um, Goodell airway is inserted, it's left in place until your patient receive, um, comes back to consciousness and in this case they might gag or start to choke and want to remove it. In some cases they may spit it out or you can simply remove it by tilting their head and just gently sliding it out in the way that it goes, out like that. As I um, mentioned earlier, that was the rotation method of insertion. If you had a child under eight years of age, you would actually use a tongue depressor and pressing the tongue down, you actually don't use a rotation method, you actually just insert the airway this way, straight over the tongue and into the airway that way. Um, this is because a child has a much narrower airway and their tongue is actually bigger so there's not the space to be turning it around. But for um, anybody over the eight, eight years of age, you would actually use the rotation method of insertion. I'm now going to demonstrate to you how to suction for any debris um, in your patient. So you need to prepare um, all your equipment first. So you need to um, have some sterile water for cleaning um, your Y suction catheter. Um, you also need to have a little suction pack, like so. So I'll just get this out. Wash your hands. And always remember to put in your practicing. And inside your pack you have um, some sterile gloves. So I'll just Um, next you take your Yankasaka out of the packet. This one is obviously not a sterile one, but usually they come in their own individual packet for individual use. So you would um, take that out and connect it to your suctioning machine. So that just pushes into there like so. So before you've actually inserted your Goodell airway, you want to remove any debris that you can. And the Yanker Suck is really good for removing any viscous, um, viscous kind of um, excretions that are, can be in the mouth. Um, so turning your suction on, and with the head tilted back and the mouth open, you just want to gently suction in to the mouth being careful not to actually suction on touch it, touching the sides of the mouth um, as it can cause damage and not going too far down the throat and suction everything out as so. Turn it off. The other type of suctioning that you can perform um, is using the Y suction catheter and it also comes in an individual packet so just take that one off and dispose of that bag and it comes in its own individual packet as well for individual sterile use and it also just connects to the end of the tubing like 
like so. Now with this one, it has a little valve here to control the suctioning of air because it's really important that as you're inserting, you're not suctioning, that you insert and then let the suction suck and then it's okay to have it on as you're removing it in a twisting motion. But I'll just demonstrate that for you. You also need to, it's, it's good to um, sometimes use a little bit of lubricant, but because we have actually got the Goodell in, in this situation, in this scenario, we've actually got the Goodell airway inserted. So I'll just insert it. So, so we're actually in this situation, we're going to insert the um, Y suction catheter through the Goodell airway and down into the trachea to remove any excretions um, and vomit or any type of debris that could be in there that could be still obstructing the airway and because the patient is unconscious they can't actually excrete it themselves so we're, that's why we're suctioning to remove it for them. So we turn the suction on and to check it's working if you, you just dip it into your water like so and you'll hear it, it bubbles so you can yeah you can see that you can control the suction so that's sucking when I have my thumb on and when I release it, it's not sucking anymore. So then you just want to gently push it down through the Goodell airway into the trachea and once it's in there, you can suction all the excretions out and you can twist it around and then pull it out in a twisting motion. And it's important to clean your um, catheter in between so you just do that by using your water so suction up into the water and then you can do it again like so removing all the debris and excretions that could be blocking the trachea and inhibiting your patient from breathing So, and well, when you've finished, turn it off, remove the um, catheter from the end of your tubing and correctly dispose of it if you hold it inside your gloved hand and pull your glove over, actually over the top of the catheter, disposing it into the bag and everything is then folded up and put into the contaminated waste bin, like so, and wash your hands. It's really important to measure all the secretions um, in your notes, uh, measure it and document it in your notes, and documenting what, if it's frothy, if it's what kind of consistency, what kind of colour it is, and also in your in your nursing notes to document the insertion of your Goodell airway um, and any observations that you observed in that time. Sorry, hey, I forgot to mention that when suctioning, you should always wear a pair of goggles and an apron to protect yourself from um, any bodily fluids that may come in contact with you. So you're protecting your eyes and all your clothing by using an apron and goggles as well as gloves. I forgot to to actually put them on in the demonstration, but I will on the day. <laughs>